So this video is going to talk about, first of all, our lovely um, PyPan data, PyPan lab that we did, the heating of land versus water, where we heated up dark soil, light colored sand, and water. Uh, we turned on the light bulb and every minute we took the temperature for 13 minutes. Then we turned the light bulb off and we re continued recording the temperature for another seven minutes. And um, what we saw is that the dark soil heats, heated up the fastest, the sand kind of came in second place, and the water came in last place. All right. If we look at data from that lab, I graphed it, and it looks something like this. Okay. So um, the soil heated up the quickest. And then when we turned off the light, it cooled down also pretty quickly. Um, the sand came in second place. And then the water kind of heated up really slowly. And then when we turned off the light, it really didn't cool off very much. It held its temperature. Okay. So what that meant, uh, about water anyway, is that water kind of holds its temperature, okay? It heats up very slowly and it cools off very slowly. And we have a word for that. We call it um, heat capacity. So we say that water has a very high heat capacity. It holds its temperature, all right? The soil would have a, the worst or the lowest heat capacity. All right. Now, why did the dark soil heat up faster? Uh, well, think about when you're wearing a, a black shirt in the summer versus a white shirt in the summer. Which one do you feel uh, hotter in? The dark one. All right. And the reason for that is because when the sun shines on something, it's got all of its visible light colors um, that, that we just call white light, but the Roy G. Biv colors are in that solar, you know, that in the sun's light, Roy G. Biv, shining down at you, all right? I'm wearing a black shirt, so when the sun shines down on me, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, all of that is striking my shirt but none of it is bouncing back and reflecting, meaning all of the energy is being absorbed by the dye in this shirt. Black colors absorb all of the visible light colors. If I were wearing a white shirt, like the white of this uh, piece of paper, the light strikes it and then bounces back. So, if the light energy is bouncing back, it's not going to heat up very much. But if the light energy is being absorbed into something, that's going to heat it up. So that's why our dark soil heated up faster. Okay. Dark colored materials absorb visible light energy. This is about as much as I can zoom in, unfortunately, without losing it. Dark colored materials absorb visible light energy from the sun. None of the visible light energy is reflected when you're wearing something black and thus it heats up quite a bit. If you're wearing something like white, a light colored material like white, it's going to reflect more of the visible light energy and it heats up less. All right. So thinking back to that, heats up very quickly. It's absorbing a lot of the energy. This is absorbing some, but reflecting some of it. And water, water just by the nature of water itself and the, mo the molecules and the bonds in the water, water, it's not because of reflecting and absorbing. It's just because of the nature of water has what we call a high heat capacity. It holds its temperature. It heats up slowly, holds on to that temperature, cools down slowly. Okay. Now, how does all of this um, play into heating up of Lake Michigan? 
Well, we're going to start with a nice little picture drawing. So do this for yourself. Um, start out with a picture of land and water. Land and water and the sun shining down it. Let's say this is Lake Michigan. Okay? So during the day, this is like our pie pan experiment. We got land, we got water. What's going to heat up faster? According to our pie pan data, the land is going to heat up faster. All right. So this is going to heat up faster. I'm going to just say heats faster. And this is going to be heating up slower as that sun is shining down on it, okay? What's that going to do to the air over the land? Well, what do you know about hot air? If this is heating up and heating the air above it, hot air rises, all right? So the hot air rises. And what that means then is that those air molecules are leaving this area they're going up higher, all right? So the hot air is rising, and that means that this air is becoming less dense, all right? So the air um, density decreases. Now, what we call that in like weather and atmosphere when you have the density of air decreasing, meaning the molecules are going up, 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 you have few air molecules here because they're all going up. That's called a low pressure area. Okay? That's really important to write down. A lot of times in weather, they just show it with a big L for low. All right? So, low pressure. Now, let's look at the other side of our picture. Uh, sort of like the opposite is happening then. So this air over here is cooler compared, you know, to the land, of course. This air here is cool above the lake. And so what do we know about cold air? It's doing just the opposite of what hot air does. Cool air sinks. So cool air or cold air sinks. All right. If more and more molecules are falling down, you're getting more air molecules, more air molecules, more air molecules. They're all piling up on top of each other. So the air density increases, meaning your air is getting more dense, more heavy. Um, and so when you have that, that's called a high pressure area. And again, in weather, they often just call it or show it with a big H for high pressure. Okay, so my little arrows to show that the air is sinking. Okay, now what happens with the wind now? Well, wind always blows from where there's a higher pressure to a lower pressure. Wind always blows high to low, just like water always moves high to low, if you remember that from biology. So the wind is always moving from high to low. So this is going to represent our wind always blows from high to low. All right. So this is your wind. And so if you were at the beach during the daytime, you would experience what's called a sea breeze. They call it a sea breeze because the the wind the where the wind is starting is uh, it's coming from the sea or from the lake. All right, so this is called a sea breeze. Okay, the wind blows from the lake onto the land. And why does it do that? Because of all of this unequal um, heating. We have more heating here, less heating here, 
test. And so we've got the low pressure due to the air rising and a high pressure due to the air sinking and that causes the wind to blow. All right? Now, the opposite is true at night. So at night, I'm just going to show the picture here. At night, uh, we have what's called a land breeze. And how that happens is this. All right, let's start with the water. Uh, the water at night is going to be warmer because water holds its temperature. It's going to be warmer than in on the land. And so we've got this warm air rising. All right, the warm air is rising, causing a low pressure. Uh, the land is going to be cooler, so all of this air sinking, causing high pressure. And the wind blows from high to low in this case. All right, so the wind always blows high to low. All right, and again, this is um, unequal. It has to do with unequal heating and the way that your land holds the temperature versus the water. The water is holding on to its daytime temperature, so the water is going to be warmer relative to the land at night. All right? So that is your breeze picture. Now, last picture that I want to talk about then, maybe two more. All right, one of them is a picture of the temperatures at the lake. And if you get a, a look, the temperatures are warmer out in the land here and cooler by the lake. And why does that happen? Well, because the temperature of Lake Michigan right now is still pretty cool. And so it's keeping the temperatures of the air and, and the land nearby it, keeping it pretty cool. Whereas the land is heating up faster um, because it's, you know, its heat capacity is different. So we've got 73, 69, 67, and then we've got like 64, 64, 63. Okay. Last picture that I want to show is a weather map picture. So we've got a high and a low. Which way is the wind going to blow? Which way will the wind blow? Well, here's your high. Here's your low. Wind always blows from high to low. So in terms of if you're in these Great Plains states or, or anything, you're going to be experiencing winds coming from the west, blowing to the east. Okay? All right, that's the end of our video. Good luck.